Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to continue this series on the topic, How Can the Church Keep the Youth More Engaged? In this video, it's a discussion with me, Brother Jim and Brother Jave, on the topic, and I'll see you guys in the next clip. But well, yeah, like I said, pretty much Jesus was fulfilling the uh, all that the prophets would say. And it's funny too, because these this generation is talking now, they weren't around when the prophets were were out there saying and delivering these messages from God, right? So this, these things were passed down from generation to generation. Um, like these people seriously were, were trained in their culture and, and their way of life. You know, it's just like, I wonder what we're, what we're being passed down, like what's being passed down to us and what we're passing down to the next generation after us. Um, like case in point, when we first got on the call, it was just like, if it's game night, everybody pull up, everybody pop out. But if it's Bible study, mm, if it's something for service where we need to use you, we're asking for you to be available for God, mm, I kind of got something to do, you know? It's just like, we're fighting for your soul. And it's like, you're fighting against us for fighting for your soul salvation which is like, now that I know what I know now, it's just like, for me, to me, it doesn't make any sense, but I get where you guys are coming from because that's what you were taught in the beginning. That was your foundation. Your foundation wasn't the word of God. Um, but this generation as a whole, we just left spiritual. Not into worship, not into the word, or anything spiritual. And everything spiritual must be accompanied with a game or activity or else they're totally zoned out. So it, it's challenging. Challenging, very challenging. Like Gio said, uh, it's the culture they grew up in, right? You guys are growing up in. And I, I would say the same for my generation as well. Compared to the stories I would hear from back then, what, what's the disconnect now? Did those from back then not pass down what they learned? Is that what it is? Or are we just not receiving it? We're just totally closed off to it. I wonder if it's just the Bible being fulfilled itself. You know, like it said, like mother would go up against daughter and father would go up against son. It was just like, there would just be contention. There would be people out here um, just constantly seeking different ways of life, different belief systems. And I don't know that, I mean, I don't know if it's, if we got that far into the end of times, but it's just, like, I, I wish we could have another retreat and just, just sit down and just rap with y'all. Just keep it real, like close the Bible for a minute, sit down, everybody put their phones down and let's just talk. Let's just, let's just really get to the bottom of it because I think that the only people that know What's wrong with y'all is y'all. The only people that know why there's a disconnect is y'all. Like we can try to figure out our own. We can try to use all these creative juices, pray to God until we're blue in the face. God, give me some inspiration to draw your children unto you. And yeah, we gotta just trust that God is gonna give us the inspiration and we may win one or two or three for God, but there's so many else out there. That's, so many others that are out there that's lost and it's just like, for us, it's heartbreaking. For us, it's, it's, it's tough for us to swallow that pill, knowing that no one wants Jesus, but everyone wants the world. So that's just, just the reality of it. But that, for me, like, when you have that aha moment, oh, wow, this is what the prophets were saying back in the day. That means they, they had a great foundation. This thing was passed down from generation to generation. And I think that last point, I think that it took a certain, a certain um, level of discernment to realize that the, the law wasn't the way of life. But when Jesus came, that, that, that he was the way of life. I, I, Cause like, 
they were like trained this, 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 this law, this law, this law, like 600 something plus laws. Like, yeah, yeah, this, this, this. And if you, and, and you can be like, you can get your tunnel vision and you could not see that there's anything else out there or that, that Jesus, that, that there was still one missing piece. So that when Jesus came, boom, that was the last piece of the puzzle. And oh, this is what the prophets were talking about. All oh, hell the king. This is the king. This is him. This is what the Bible, this is the, 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 the Old Testament was talking about. I think that is important because that shows your um, yeah, yeah, it's your level of discernment and just being aware of how God is moving, being aware of the scriptures, having knowledge of the scriptures so that when they are fulfilled in front of you, I think it just builds up on your faith in God. Like, yo, this dude was not lying. This is the real thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, to comment on which I was saying before. Now, I know both sides of it. The size of where the uses are is on right now and the side I'm currently on. So I've experienced on both sides. Um, I really, I can't lie to you and tell you I know why, like the true reason why there's a disconnect. I really do not. I know why, I know my reason why I was disconnected, but I can't speak for everybody else. And you know, I kind of held, held myself responsible for um, a lot of it because I know that I got the ability to talk to the people that I know and stuff like that, but I don't. But like Jill was saying on the year retreat, I wish we had year retreat this year. And the, the idea that you had, that would be fun too. Well, not fun, but that would be good to re, re, to be able to pick their mind and see where their mindset is at. But I could say that um, to me, something that could play a part in that is the parents. Because a lot of the, because a lot of the parents are just sending them to church, not directly talking to them about God, not seeing where their mindset is at, not seeing where their belief is at. Because especially like with me, same thing with me. Like nobody, like growing, ain't nobody never went and talked to us about like God, why you believe in God. Um, the basically whole nine yard is just that you're a Christian, you're going to church. End of the story. Whether you feel like you want to go or whether you feel like you're not, you're going. And that, as a result, that led to my disconnect with church. That's why I hated being at church. I didn't want to be in no youth service. You guys, Jill. Um, you remember, you remember, I think it was the first time you met us, like the, probably like the second time you asked us, like, do y'all like come in? I told you straight up, my mom is the reason why I'm coming in. And yeah, and that led to my disconnect, but good thing God caught me and I had to realize what I was doing and I was able to change that around. That's why I have such love for church, such love for, such love for the word, and I want to push it out there and I want to promote it. That's, that's how it starts, though, bro. Like, you, you think, like, these the Jewish people, like, the kids, that they, they want to do this? Like, it's reinforced everywhere they go. Like, by a certain age, I think it's, it might be 13, like they have to be able to recite any specific part of the first five books of the Bible. Like, like they, they have like a rites of passage. Like you, 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 you live the premature years of your life learning this foundation so that when you get a certain age and you cross into, you transition into manhood, it's in you now. You're, you're trained. So even if you decide to just veer off, you already memorized the first five books of the Bible. So it's already in you. Like, you know the word. It just now has to come to life. But wherever they go, you know, like, like the, the, the Sabbath, the, the synagogues, like the, the, the way they dress, the people they're around, like the parents, the grandparents, like everybody is in the culture. You know, everybody's a part of it. You know, not to say that all of them are, you know, religious and believe, you know, but I just, I just think that it, it's tough. Like there has to be a transition, like you said, um, Ezra, where you go from, I come here just because my mother or my father or my parents, whoever I live with told me to come to, 
I want to be here because I want to be here. I want to be here for God. Like, I want to get closer. Yeah. A uh, couple of things, and I don't want to veer too far off from the study, but no, um, as around one, one key thing you said is parents, right? Um, it, the role is so important. I don't know if they understand or fully conceive that, that just because they come Sunday, don't think we fed them to, enough to get them through Monday to Saturday. And I think, I think that plays into it, right? It has to start at home first. Right? It can't just be what they get in, in youth group. Youth group is two hours maybe, right? That's not going to hold them or hold us. Right? So we leave church on Sunday and we go back to school on Monday in the world, right? Around all these different things, things that entice our flesh. And we have nothing to hold us and all we can do is wait to get back to church on Sunday, right? And I see a lot of the times, or for some parents, the environment at home does not help just because the parents come to church, right? Point in case, my um, father wanted their sons to stop drinking. Okay, went to the house. Guess what was there? A whole bunch of bottles. So <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do, right? Seeing that individual right. You're gonna come once a week, water. right? Save you know, like, <laughs> once a week, they're around you seven days a week, 24 hours, right? You have it in their face, we'll be expect. So it starts there, right? And uh, uh, Gio, I love what you do with Samara. Right? You sit her down, you read the words that you show them. The Bible says, train up a child the way they should go, and when they grow older, right, they will not depart from it, right? And Ezra, that's everybody, we have to go to church because our parents made it. Church, right? But that's what they're doing. Train up a child in the way he should go so that when, as you got older, you will not depart from it, right? So now you made the conscious decision. Even though when I was younger, I was forced to come to church and I didn't want to be here. Now I want to be here, right? So that, that and that's the goal that you, when you come to the age of maturity, you make that decision for yourself. I want to be here. I was there. I was the same way. Bro. I didn't want to go to church all the time. My mother was, because of the school I went to, I went to CTEI high school. So I had a, a lot of coursework. And she would say, you get two Sundays off a month. I would love it. I got to go to church. I came to the age. Uh, I did not want to miss uh, church. Uh, wow. You had two Sundays off a month? Something like that. Two Sundays off, one Sunday off. But she would allow me to take off one Sunday just for the purpose of catching up on school. I, I couldn't miss a Sunday for nothing. A different household. It's all good. But then I came to the age where it's like, I don't want to miss church. Right? I got to get to church just one Sunday once a week. I don't care how busy I am. I gotta get to church, right? Um, so, so that's point one. Um, I wish I remember point two and three. I don't. Holy Spirit, hopefully it will remind me if it's something to be said, but it starts in the home. Man. I believe so much in that. Yeah, you know what's the crazy thing? Y'all want God. It's not that y'all yeah. don't want God. Y'all, yo, y'all get me so tight. Like, y'all want If we sit you down, Talk to y'all, but I understand the things of the world, it's in front of your face, you want that too, right? And you don't know how to do both or realize that you can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it too, right? Y'all, I don't believe that y'all are that point where y'all want nothing to do with God. I believe y'all do want God, y'all do want to serve God. It's just fighting that flesh, right? And really understanding. Yeah. How do I live in this world and not be of it? And even though partying is fun and drinking is fun and smoking and fun and can't, how, how do I not do it? Okay. Um, my other point was just to piggyback on the, the thing with mm-hmm. the sitting them down and, and getting this insight, right? Um, it, it's also on us as leaders, right, to, to learn from that insight and make the necessary changes. That's where I feel I, I don't have as much confidence will we make the necessary changes based on the insight we gain, right? Because I've seen that before. The Brooklyn District Youth of the Year thing, that was some valuable insight. The things that y'all said on that, that question panel, that discussion panel, right? Did we make the changes from what y'all said? All right, so it, it's on us too as leaders to listen, to hear what they're saying and, and work with them. Right. Is every leader willing to do so? I don't know. We got we got to be willing on our part too, 
And I feel like in my moment, somebody would have sat me down and talked to Like, I'd be thinking there's so much situation. If somebody just would have sat down and talked to me, you know how much trouble I could have avoided? I'd just be thinking that I could have avoided so many situations if I just sat down and talked with somebody. But me, and I could think this also played a part in this, a lot of us are not taught communication. So when it comes to communication, you avoid it. I'm not, I was not really taught how to communicate well, like with people on a, on a feeling type stuff, like how you feeling, how you doing. So that also played a part with me not wanting to go to nobody and just like to deal with stuff by myself. And I could think like with the youth, a lot of them are like that. A lot of them are not taught how to deal with their feelings, how to talk, how to, um, talk about the emotion with people, how they feel. A lot of them are not taught that. So when, so when they're coming into church and they are trying to do that job, it's not going to work because they're not taught that. And, and usually if you're not taught something, you, you most likely resist it. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about that. Um, I usually have it, um, but it, it tells you that you, I think it's right around that, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous availeth much. I just right on top of that um, verse, it talks about being able to come to your brother and and confess to your brother your faults and what you're going through so that he can pray for you and build you up. Um, I think that in and of itself, and I'll even accompany that with Genesis when God was like, after he made everything, he said it was good, except when he made Adam and realized that Adam was by himself and that was the only thing that wasn't good. God is a God of relationship. So the fact that God made a companion for, for Adam and he then, and then Paul later on says, and in, in, I believe it was Paul uh, later on says that we ought to come to our brother and confess our faults so that he or she can pray for us. Um, I think those two go hand in hand to let us know that we are not supposed to go through this alone, that we should not be ashamed of when we fall because we all fall, right? But the, the, the enemy, our flesh, society, the world makes us believe that when we do something bad, can't tell anybody right we, we, we gotta we gotta tuck it under the thing and hopefully we don't get caught but we serve a god who's everywhere at all times so we're just fooling ourselves right like we're better off just confessing it either to him and praying to him about it or having a brother when we are unable to pray for ourselves having a brother or sister that we can confide in and help have them build us up and that's what it's really about like i mean you um, as Ron can attest to that yourself when you were going through your struggle at the time you were able to reach out to us and we were able to help you get through whatever you're getting through um, right but then it doesn't stop there like, like Jay and I are supposed to follow up on that yo how you doing yeah. how you how you making up right um, you know are, are everything okay just to make sure like, do you need to be you know we gotta get back in the gym put some more shots up you know lift some more weights you know train a little bit more you know, just speaking figuratively anyway, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a two-way street. Yeah, the same thing with, with Jay and I, like we, we go back and forth. Like, like I'll tell him, he's like, yo, you well, and you got to put me in a headlock. Or I got to give him a wedgie. Like it, it, it goes back and forth like that. Yeah, but that's yeah. what it's about. It's about yeah. helping each other get through this. Yeah. And I could, I could tell you that y'all do a good job at that. Cause anytime I hit y'all up on some, it, it, whether it's on some cool stuff or I'm going through some stuff, y'all got me, y'all got my back. And I'm thank I'm so, I'm very thankful for these two people right here. Joe and Javi. Uh, yes. Like, I'm, I'm very thankful for y'all because there's so many situations I would still be dealing with if I never talked to y'all about it. So I'm just thankful for y'all to be in the open ears and always ready to listen, always giving me good advice. Whether we on some funny stuff, making fun of each other, joking, or we on some serious stuff, y'all always did, and y'all always fulfilling y'all role. And then one thing that I like so much about y'all is that when I'm with y'all, I don't be feeling like I'm like nine and like 10 years younger than y'all. 
You're the only one that reminds us of that every time you get a chance. Hey, so. old heads, uh, right? Uh, you talking about old heads. Shut up. <laughs> no, but no, I like that because you know what same people that you hang around, like they kind of like make you like feel like you that much younger than them. But like with y'all, I don't I don't ever like when I bring it up, it always on some funny stuff, but like I don't ever feel like I'm that much younger than y'all. Like I be feeling like I'm still I'm in my twenties right now. All right, let's go cop the car. What's yeah, up? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a I think that's a very good thing to have with the youth. Don't let them like don't let that age gap affect a relationship. Last thing though, and we get right back to it. Yeah. Um, and this this is why I want you to know I appreciate you too. You you call and just be like, yo, you're good. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that that means a lot, right? And I look at you like my brother. But I appreciate you for that, man. Keep that up. Man. That, that's a, a great quality um, that you have. And with that being said too, um any youth watching there, if you got youth leaders that's helping you, make sure you check on them too. Cause just like how we go through stuff, they go through stuff too. I know Jave and Gio go through them stuff. They don't have good days every day. They may be irritated, mad, angry. So that's why I make sure I check up on them. They check up on me. So I feel like it's my responsibility to check up on them too. And then plus, that, that's my personality. Like I ride for my people. Like, I go hard for the people that I love and the people that are around me. And which is a good thing and a bad thing because not all the time you get that same energy from people, but these are two people I get that same energy from. Same energy I put in them, they put the, I get that same energy back. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. This is part two of the series. Part three, four, and five will be dropping soon. If you haven't already liked the video, like. If you're new, subscribe. Turn on your post notification. And this is Motivation for Young Christians. I'm out.